Hey, brother! Then I have been staring at the Lestrange family tree nonstop for the past several days, and I am literally seeing it in my sleep. Why is it so important to Fantastic Beast? What is with the beautiful mind wall, Tina? And you know what? I don't think Tina has quite figured it out yet, but maybe, just maybe, we have. <laughs> special announcement guys this Friday Ben and I will be launching our very own Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Brothers, And to celebrate the launch, we are going to be doing a, wait for it, 12 hour stream. It's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna play a bunch of different games and reveal a couple of things, including a brand new t-shirt and the cold brew bottle for Carlin Brothers Coffee. It's gonna go from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Friday, twitch.tv slash Brothers. link in the description. The Lestrange family, what a bunch of jerks. Am I right? Well, maybe. Certainly as far as we know thus far. Easily the most famous or probably infamous member we all know about is Bellatrix Lestrange, but frankly she marries into the family and I think she might be giving everyone else a really bad rap. But then again, maybe not. I mean, her husband was Rodolphus Lestrange and they were both Death Eaters and really fanatical ones at that. I mean, they were like hardcore. They're like with Barty Crouch level up there. And I, you know, where am I going with this? Lita, right, our new Lestrange, Lita Lestrange. At the very least, we know that Newt Scamander is the man and that he was involved with Lita at some point, which makes you have to think, she can't be all bad, right? Look, they even carved their initials together under the side of this desk, isn't that cute? But then again, maybe not. She is, after all, now engaged to his brother, Theseus Scamander, and I'm not sure which one of them that makes meaner, but either way, they both seem kind of rude. On the flip side, though, we have seen Newt's new girlfriend kick his brother's butt already, so whatever, it all works out. Tina for the win! Hashtag Team Nina, am I right? Or would it be Team... Toot. Oh, yeah, definitely toot. Toot is way better. Speaking of Tina, though, for the past few days, we have been diving as deep as we possibly can into whatever mystery it looks like she's working on down in her little sewer fort there. Now, if you pause at just the right moment, you actually get a pretty good shot of what she's been working on, and here's what we've been able to take away so far. First is that Lita Lestrange and Credence appear to share a father in Corvus Lestrange the Fourth, and that Credence's real name is actually Corvus. Corvus the fifth, to be more precise. But they actually have different mothers. Lita's mom is Lorena Kama, who actually has another child with another man who we don't know yet, but that child is Yusuf Kama, who appears on this poster with Tina. And we know that like Tina, Yusuf is also hunting down Credence. And we know that Lorena was taken by a dark wizard, Corvus, and that they had a child together, who is again, Lita. So honestly, I can kind of see why Yusuf would want to track down Corvus if he took his mom, but I don't see why he would want to track down Credence as much unless he wants to like team up with him and tell him the truth about his father. Back to Credence though, his mother is someone by the name of Clarice Tremblay, who currently isn't listed to appear in the movie, but there is someone scheduled to be Mrs. Lestrange, who I'm thinking has to be her. Moving back to the wall on Tina's sewer fort though, the double rings on either of these lines would seem to indicate that Corvus the fourth married each of these women and just sort of based on the coloring we can guess that Lorena was black and Clarice was white which I guess helps explain why Lita and Credence can be siblings while having very different color skin tones but why this is important to Tina I have no idea we can also see up the family tree a little bit the weirdest part of which is that we can see Corvus the fourth was born to a Lestrange and a Lestrange so that's not great but it might not be as surprising as you think, as inbreeding was known to happen in big pure blood wizarding families like the Gaunts. And finally, under Corvus's name is the symbol of the Raven, which I guess makes sense because Corvus means Raven. And where this gets really interesting is that this is not the only place we see Raven imagery either. For example, you can see giant statues of them all around Grindelwald while he's making his little ring of fire right here. That's because in this scene, he's actually standing in the Lestrange family mausoleum. So presumably these are nods to Corvus the first, second, and third. We also see Queenie inspecting a white Raven right here, which I don't know, could be like a nod to where they're all gonna meet later. But the real question I keep having is, 
why is Tina researching this at all? And why in such secrecy? It all seems pretty cut and dry. There's the whole family tree. You see how it fits together. What are you still trying to solve? Well, we learned in the first Fantastic Beast that Tina was originally demoted from her position by revealing herself to Mary Lou Barebone while she was saving Credence and that her and Credence formed some kind of a bond at that moment. So it's possible she's just trying to help Credence track down who his parents are because that seems to be the driving force behind the whole Whole movie. Like, I kid you not, as we were writing this script, a new promo dropped from Warner Brothers and we got this brand new quote from J.K. Rowling and Credence. The reason everyone goes to Paris really is Credence. I want to know who I am. The odd thing about that is if this is what's driving the whole movie forward, then why are you giving us the answers ahead of time? Like, we already know who he is, right? He is the son of Corvus and Clarice, the half-brother of Lita Lestrange. I mean, I'm sure that's very comforting information for him, but what's the big revelation for us, the audience? What are we supposed to take away from it? Well, here's where things get a little sticky. What if, in fact, Corvus Lestrange IV isn't Corvus Lestrange, but is instead, or maybe even also, Gillette Grindelwald? Yes, I know I'm saying his first name wrong. Just gonna have to deal with it. I'm gonna say it a lot. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but stay with me. It's all gonna make sense. First and foremost, once again, Corvus means Raven. The meeting ground for all of Grindelwald's followers is in the Lestrange Mausoleum, which is flanked by ravens and nods to the previous Corvuses. Cor Corvus, not Corvus I? What do you call a group of ravens? I feel like, is it murder? No, that's crows, although that would be perfect, right? It's actually... Oh my god, it's not as perfect as this. I kid you not, a group of ravens is called a conspiracy, which is exactly what this is. Man, animal group names are so awesome. Did you know that a flock of flamingos is actually called a flamboyance? <laughs> uh, hilarious, but not important. What's important is that what if Credence is actually Grindelwald's son? First, let's talk about Lita. Her poster says, implicated by prophecy, which is vague at best. What could this unknown prophecy possibly say that merely implicates her? Because to me, implicated means eh, probably somebody else. Like the same way Neville was implicated by the chosen one prophecy. But so who could the other implicated person be? Well, if we go back to the family tree, the obvious guess would be Credence. Which makes us think the prophecy names someone like the child of Corvus or the offspring of the white raven or something vague like that. And if that's the case, then who their father is is suddenly really important. And yet, if you check IMDB, there is currently no one listed to play Corvus Lestrange IV. How could such an important character not appear in the movie? It's almost as if, I don't know, someone's already playing him. And speaking of prophecy anyway, what does it take for there to be a prophecy? A seer. And guess who has been confirmed to be a seer in the Fantastic Beast movies? Gillette Grindelwald. Which, so what, right? How does that connect him to the Lestrange family? Hmm, glad you asked. Now, I don't normally like to talk about the cursed child that much, but there does happen to be some evidence in here, although it is semi-spoilery, so just heads up, there's gonna be cursed child spoilers as soon as the next five seconds. In the cursed child, Delphi is told a prophecy that the Dark Lord will rise again, but who tells her the prophecy is not revealed to us, except that we know she was raised alone by Rodolphus Lestrange, so he is pretty pretty much the only candidate. And we learn in Harry Potter that seers are genetic. So if Rodolphus actually was a seer, then it means someone up his family line also must have been a seer. And if Grindelwald was actually Corvus, well, then some things are really starting to line up. And it doesn't stop there. Now we already know there's some connections to Greek mythology in Fantastic Beasts, what with Theseus being involved in everything. So we decided to see if we could connect any other dots and guess what we did with none other than Corvus, or really the raven in Greek mythology, which is most closely associated with the god Apollo, who happens to be the god of, wait for it, prophecy among other things. And also, also, actually, actually, guess what Apollo was the patron of? Delphi, which I have to say looks a lot like the Lestrange mausoleum. But hey, I hear you. That's all very circumstantial evidence. What you want is physical evidence, right? Well, good news, we have that too. We've already made a video about Grindelwald's eyes and how maybe one of them eventually goes on to be Mad-Eye Moody, so you can check out that video by clicking the card. But today, we have a new thought. The condition of having two mismatched colored eyes is known as heterochromia, and it's a pretty rare condition. But do you know what the main cause of heterochromia is? 
Inbreeding. Yeah. And who do we know was the result of inbreeding? Corvus Lestrange the Fourth, AKA Gellert Grindelwald. I mean, I'm just saying, that's a lot of dominoes in a row right there. Now that there are still a few question marks, like for example, if Grindelwald actually is Leda and Credence's father and he married both women, he would have had to have been really young when he married Leda's mom. But that said, he doesn't even have to be both their parents. It's possible Leda is the true daughter of the actual Corvus Lestrange and that later on, Grindelwald assumed the identity of Corvus Lestrange and had Credence. We have seen him take on someone's identity before and if he may made a prophecy implicating the powerful offspring of Corvus Lestrange, then maybe he would try and produce that himself. But then you'd think he'd be aware of his son too. Right? Well, who's to say he's not? He spends literally the whole first movie hunting for a child in America. And we know that Credence's mother actually fled to America after she was impregnated, so Credence wouldn't know what his father is and vice versa. But really, the final thing that actually makes me think Grindelwald might really be Credence's father is another line from the promo that dropped today. The path has been laid, and he is following him, the trail that will lead him to me. Like, back to back, Credence says, I want to figure out who I am, and then Grindelwald says he's going to find me. Which to me means that either A, Grindelwald is the father, or B, he is very much going to be pretending to be. But hey, only four more weeks until we finally get to find out. Ben, my question for you and everyone else is what do you think? Is it possible that Grindelwald is actually the father of Credence? Let us know in the towel section down below. And speaking of crimes of Grindelwald coming out, if you want to come watch it with us, tickets for our Orlando meetup on December 1st are now on sale for every Everyone check the link in the description. We're all gonna hang out and watch the movie and then we'll do a little meet and greet afterwards. It's gonna be so much fun. These socks are amazing! Guys, thanks so much as always for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you wanna see how Kowalski might actually be a Hufflepuff, you can check out this video right here. Or if you wanna see how the Elder Wand might have a brother, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.